G'day punters and welcome to SA Derby Week, Queensland Guineas Week, Warrnambool Week, oh, it's all happening, Wagga Week, Blake Johnston, how are you? It is all happening, Radelaide, City of Churches, it's about all they've got going for them, and the SA Derby. Yes. Is the Goodwood or next week? Next Saturday. Next Saturday. So it's three weeks the carnival yeah. now. Oh, what a place to be. They've, 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 they've sort of put all their eggs into one basket, Adelaide, because they had Live Golf last weekend on the same weekend as Sangster and Australasian Oaks. So they're four biggest. And I think it's the AFL's knockoff version of Magic Round, Gather Round, that was a couple of weeks ago. So there's about six weeks of excitement in, in Adelaide and then it drops off for the other 46 weeks of the year. So up here, we live on the Gold Coast punters, for those of you that don't know. It's a public holiday on Monday. Yeah. What's that for? Labor Day. So is that countrywide or is that just... Just Queensland. Just Queensland. Yeah. Because I was going to say, they, they should... Like, I reckon the... I think that they should race run all these feature races on the one weekend. Like around a public holiday. Yeah. Saturday, all up Monday, live golf on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> it could it could work. I, I'm a big fan of of sort of long weekends and public holiday, like, you know, having... So that's... I, well, I've just got back from Rocky for the Archer and usually the race is on the Sunday and the Monday is the public holiday. But they've got Beef Week this week, so they couldn't run it next Saturday, next Sunday. So... There was no public holiday to back up into, so no good. It's a little bit quiet on course, but yeah. Well, I, I always think that's a good idea. They used to do it around, like I think the Doncaster used to be run on a, a Monday. Mm, I think it either did. that or the Metrop. I think it was a sort Doncaster. of run them both on the same weekend. Yeah, interesting. Good racing. How how have you been? I, I haven't been in the office for ten days. Been good, been chipping good. away. Yeah, nothing much to report. No. Bit lonely. In How'd here. you go on the punt at, at Rocky. Rocky? No good. No good. Did not have a single winner all day. That's not which good. It wasn't ideal. But Hopefully you didn't bet in every race. I uh, pretty much did. Yeah, yeah. but uh, co- uh, with a few all-in bets that I had in the on the Archer and um, for once they got the better of you. Yeah, the Ro- they Ro- sent him sent him back with his ass out of his pants. Pretty much the one the one good thing was that I ended up in a. In a function with free grog all day. So, oh, that's all right. Yeah, so that that's was back in a winner. I was like, oh well, this I've I've broken square. Yeah, that's right. It would have been a complete strip if it was. Would have been a thousand dollar ticket. So yeah, pretty probably. <laughs> <laughs> How many golds did you drink on the day? Oh, you wouldn't believe, but they only had great northerns. Oh wow! Mm. So I had a few. a few. Yeah, not as good. Not as good. No, but then it sort of rolled in. They had espresso martinis and oh, jeez. Rum. My old man likes Great Northerns. That's his beer of choice. His go-to? I think um, Great Northern's most popular beer in Australia. Apparently, yeah. Yeah, do you know that? Yeah. I mean, not in, it's never in my fridge, but it's not. I I'm, had to drink a fair bit of it on the weekend because the Calcutta on Friday was sponsored by, must be Carlton or Carlton CUB, and they were Great Northern. So. It's, not, it's, not, it's not much different to all those other sort of crisp no, style beers. No, it's not. Just marketed it's, well. Yeah, it's drinkable. Yeah, but no, it was a good weekend. Um, good to get up there. Um, I had a chat to Josh Parr after the the Archer. They all came up into the function room, and he just said that the winner of the Archer Namazu. He said he just went so fast. He said nothing else could get into the race. So nice first experience for oh, Josh Parr. Oh, Joshy, Quaker one week. How many uh, how many drinks had you had under your belt at that stage? Did were you talking sense to him? Or yeah, yeah, just... yeah I, I always talk sense, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've seen you with a few drinks under your belt. Yeah, the, well, the sun was still up. Put it like that. So that was. Oh, that's all right. That was all right. I'm sure. That, I'm by sure the time the sun went down, that that's when the. I'm sure you spoke a little bit of sense. Had you had a uh, a, a martini yet? No. What do you call them? Espresso. Espresso martini. Yeah, yeah that's right. No, They're good. Not not by that point. No. no. We, we saved ourselves for once we went back to the pub and. They come out about ten PM. Yeah, just keep your keep yeah. your punching until That's about right. two AM. Exactly. Yep. Yep. What uh, do we got going on this weekend? Oh, we've got lots going on, Blake. We've obviously got the SA Derby in Adelaide, which we've touched on, and like I said previously, there is just Guineas races everywhere. I mean, there's the SA Guineas, the Hawkesbury Guineas, the Queensland Guineas. Today might be the Wagga Guineas. 
well, it might be tomorrow. Yep. There's just guineas everywhere. And I, I, I like the guineas races. There's always sort of a, a good one. Hawkesbury last year, Hawaii 5-0, Queensland guineas, Kovalika. So maybe, you know, we've, I think it's pays to keep your eye on these races for... Yeah, I, the Queensland guinea is actually a really good race. Hot race. Mm. Yeah, really hot race. You're, and there's a lot of chances. There is. Big fields. Yeah. Lots of wide draws. Mm. I was going to back Port Lockro. Yeah, I had a little all-in ticket on Ahariri in the Derby all-up Port Lockro in the guineas. Oh, yeah. He's well, still alive. I still think he's a great chance. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so do I. Um, I I'm going to back him. I just thought, mm. I think we're, we're going to get... Double figures at some stage between now and Saturday. Yes, he's borderline. I think he's about nine nine dollars now. Yeah, he, he's. A, I like him. He's a good chance. I think he can roll forward. And we both think Mister Kip Chong is not going to get into the field, no. or they're not going to go there. No, earlier in the day. Yeah, we'll be. get they'll get the money there. Yep. Do the That's double. Right. Yeah. The what? Who are they? Go Bloodstock. The yellow colours double. Yeah, the yellow double. I like that. Um, do you want to talk about the SA Derby? Blake. Yeah, that's we'll your, your forte, South Australian Group One racing. Yeah. And Coco's son around that four dollar fifty mark, your favourite. Bold Soul coming off a, a win last Saturday in the Chairman's is around that sort of five fifty, six dollar mark. Warmonger, he was the, the flashing light in that Chairman's as well. But I think you're we're both with the Phillies, I think. I thought Warmonger was I thought that I thought it was pretty average. I just penned that entire form line. That they race. were just, it was a bunch finish. Yeah. 12 of them across the track. No, thank he you. He got out the back and he hit the line okay. Mm. I had something on him. Like, he's he's always sort of shown a little bit of promise, but no, I, I couldn't I couldn't have any of those horses out of the chairman's. No, yeah, pen that race. I, I didn't know Coco Sun was favourite, but I'm happy to be with her. Mm. She was only third up there in that... Um, in the Australasian Oaks, Oaks over 2,000 metres. She had every possible chance. Yep. But she was good on the line there. Um, Seven-day backup. We've seen that be really good um, getting to a staying trip in the past. She draws well enough. I think she'll run the trip. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the question mark. Okay, yeah. That, that's got to be. The, the, the boys. Well, she ran fifth or sixth in a VRC derby. The boys aren't much good. No. I, I agree completely. I'm with the other filly in the race, Ahuriri, for Chris Waller. Hasn't won a SA Derby yet, so he might be just ticking them off one by one. Well, she comes out of the right race. She comes out of that. Out of the St. Ledger. Yeah, but before that. The Adrian Knox. The Adrian Knox. Yeah. That's been a really strong form race. Very strong. That Mare of Mount Buller. Didn't it, it won on Saturday? No, nah, she hit the line. She went good. Waikato girl. Oh, it won. It won. Yeah, it came, came through the, the race. race. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, Ahariri, she's on She's on the nine-day backup. She won at Flemington on Anzac Day. Um, I loved the way she won that day. She just travelled, just switched off beautifully, and then when um, Damien Lane on that occasion asked her for an effort, she, she just sprinted quickly at the end of 2,800 and put them away. I think a horse being in there, like, glad you think so. Like, he went forward and really made that ATC derby a sort of a genuine staying test. So if he does that again, I think 2,800 back to 2,500 on the quick backup or, you know, a week and a half backup, I think that's got to suit her. Um, so yeah, well, I would have thought um, Glad You Think So would be one of the better boys in the race. Yeah. That's got to be the, the right form thought, race. Yeah, I agree. Went along there. Um, yeah, and I, I, like, I wanted to back Ahuriri in the Adrian Knox but she was really well found. She was. Off that yeah. Hawkesbury race. So then yeah. I was like, oh, I don't want to drive in at $8 or yeah, whatever. In a race that like that, that, yeah. But, um, yeah, and that race produced Autumn Angel as well yeah. that came out and won the, I mean, won the ATC Oaks. Bright Red won on Bright Anzac Red Day. won. Girl. I think yeah. they've like a heap of them won. I, I was going through them the other day. I'd say there'd be at least four that have won and then Private Legacy narrowly missed in the Australasian Legacy. Oaks, so... Um, Swag of hang on, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll, yeah. I'll go and have a look. Private legacy, but yeah, it's an open race. Um, I, I, I think that I think that the Phillies are mm. deservedly at the top of the market. Yeah. Who else is at the top of the market? Do you know? Um, that I think it's Bold Soul and Warmonger are the other two, um, both coming out of the the chairman's the boys lead up last Saturday at Adelaide. Well, heaven bound one. <laughs> you know, only one oh, yeah. maiden. But he won. Yeah, so Waikato Gal won. So that's two. 
Ahuriri, that's three. Bush Girl hasn't gone around yet. Private Legacies runs second um, in a South Australian in an Australasian Oaks. Kind Words hasn't gone around. Mm-hmm. Kenyatta run well in a race behind Waikato Girl. Behind Waikato Girl, yep. yes, that's correct. And then Concello is the one that has gone no good. Mm. But I'm sure that it pulled up with issues because it was well beaten in that Australasian and Oaks. she was so. close. To, like, she was one of the favourites in that Australasian Oaks too. So. Yeah, she was. Mm. Good banter. Queensland. Are they coming to Queensland or not? Apparently, they are. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, they'd be sitting nice and happy. That would be pretty comfortable right now, I reckon. Yeah, I, yeah. I think so too. Kind Words is probably coming up here too. I'd reckon so. She's one horse that I've always sort of liked and thought she's just crying out for... Oh, that Bush Girl. Bush Girl backed up in the Derby, actually. Did she? Didn't it? Maybe. No, uh, backed up in, in the, the Oaks. Oaks. Yeah. Yeah, backed up in the Oaks. Only been six lengths. Oh, well. So, fair enough. Yep. It was 150 to one. It was 100 to one in the, um, in the Adrian Knox and 150 to one in the, the Oaks. So, she's gone better than the market's expectation. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So we're with the Phillies. Yep. Ahuriri. Uh, mm-hmm. What am I with? Coco Sun. Coco Sun. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I like that. Have you had a chance to look at any of the feature races at Hawkesbury? Like, is there one that sort of jumps off the page at, for <laughs> you, whether that be the, the Gold Crown, the Gold Cup, the Hawkesbury Guineas? Crown, Cup, Guineas. Yeah, so <clears throat> I, have, I have had a quick look at them. I haven't really got stuck into the form yet. Um, I thought one of the most interesting runners was El Bodegon mm. on the day. Especially if the rain comes, which they're tipping. Yeah, they're tipping a heavy track. Has he um, been on a heavy track in Australia since he ran third in a Cox Plate? No. Wow. So we've got to have a look. El Bodegon. I, I was just having a, a quick squeeze last night. I, I'm going to get stuck into the form. Um, I'm going to get stuck into the form tonight, but... Just having a quick look, I was I was interested because they were eighty one dollars. He's into sixty one best price available now, but like if you brought that Cox Plate run, this is a bloody <laughs> yeah. Hawkesbury. Hawkesbury Gold Cup. So yeah, so he was beat. He probably just about should have won that race. He was beaten point six of a length in a Cox Plate on a heavy eight, mm-hmm. and he's had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven starts since. They've been on a good four track, a good four track, a good four track, a good four track, a good three track, a good four track, and a good three track. So if you're gambling on him just reproducing his being, wet track form, being a, a mudder, he's got a he could be a good sixty one dollar chance. Could be. Absolutely. So I'll probably have to have something on him. I wanted to back Well Wall the other day when he drew well. He's drawn poorly in that race. Attractable if the rain didn't come. I think like that fifteen sixteen dollar price about him would be a really good price. Yep. Um, but he's not really a wet tracker. And then you got the Guineas is a good race. It is. What do you think about Schwartz? They're looking to come up and run him in a Stradbroke. That's where they. That's where they want to land. Uh, I'd almost give it away if you want a Stradbroke. I just think he's not much good. No. I, I I was we were literally having this conversation last night with a couple of mates and talking about about Schwartz and talking about. His Stradbroke credentials, because we saw something on Twitter about someone tipping it in the Stradbroke. And I said, I'd give it away if this horse won the Stradbroke. And I said, actually, no, I'd give it away if it even made the field of the Stradbroke. Like, uh, it's what's it done? It's won an Amanda Elliott at Flemington on Cup Week, which, okay, Magic Time won that race the year before, but Schwartz and Magic Time. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think he's much good. No. I he was think a little bit stiff last start in the R field, I thought, but... I think he still had his chance. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I that, think he's, he's certainly potable. But I guess it was third up last prep off an unlucky run that he exploded and won at fourteen hundred. So, yeah, well, he'd have to he'd have to explode again because mm. I like if the, if there if there was no rain, I would think Butch Cassidy was the one. Okay, he uh, he gets seven kilo weight swing on Panic. And the other horses through that race. I know um, Midnight Opal was through that race. Razors was through that race. Um, 
So the, the best of the swings, he gets a seven kilo weight swing on Penny, and I think it was like a 0. 0.6 beaten margin. So yep. I'm interested in him. Bo Jangles has gone off. He's a pretty smart horse. Mm. He was like 40 to 1 earlier in the week. He's into about $16, but 40 to 1 was probably overs. But he just does a lot wrong, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He wanted to throw that race away the other day. He did. Have you had much of a look? I want to ask you about one that could be potentially on a Queensland path for a JJ Atkins in the first race, the Clarendon, the two-year-old race. Um, I know two-year-olds sort of not necessarily your cup of tea, but when you when you find one that's got a, a big number there, he was. I thought he was very good on debut, this horse. His name is Great White Shark. J-Mac rode him. He went around, he got beat six lengths by Imperial Force. Um, I thought he closed off quite well there. Gets to 1,400 here. J-Mac sticks. If the rain comes, that's the key, I think, punters, because you'll remember his dam, Arabian Gold. Remember her? Yeah. She was a good horse, unbeaten on a heavy track. So I just thought, you know, if this horse gets a bit of sting in the track, up to 1,400. To tell you the truth, I don't know too much about it, so I'm going to have no. to look into it tonight. But put it on my to-do list. To-do, on your to-do list. I thought it was not a bad run on debut. Like, he got beat six lengths, and I think Trafalgar Square... One, same track and trip, same day, but different race as what Imperial Force won. So, you know, like, you could easily... And the time was fairly similar from just a quick look. But uh, I thought Great White Shark, if it's wet, is great value if he can get through it like his mum did. Fair call. Uh, the Hawkesbury Crown. I've had a little bit of a look at this. Um, I thought Willinga Beast was... A good hope, especially if it gets yeah. very wet. She was outstanding in the TJ. She, was she a, ran she really well in the 5, TJ. She was to one on her form going into it. Oh, but, no doubt. But, and that was on a heavy track. Yeah, but what, and she, then she went two and a half lengths. And then she went very good in mm. the Provincial Championships final. On the quick backup. She probably should have fought out the finish. She yeah. was really badly held up. Badly held up. There you go. So sh- forgive that beaten margin. Getting back on, if if you get back onto a heavy track, there's potential that I could chime into that eight nine dollar quote. Um, and then well, Madame Pomery, like I know she's probably yeah. not going as well as she has in the past. Is she? She's not in the crown though, is she? Or she's like she's she's a, an emergency, an emergency, and then yeah. she's in the cup, I think. Because I was having a look through the. All in markets earlier in the week, and I saw her in the crown, and I thought she's in the crown in the cup. Yep, I thought, wow, she's in the crown. She hasn't been on a horse home in her last two, but they've been at Group One races behind Zoo Gotcha. But they haven't really missed her. No, she's, she's like nine yeah, eight dollars. Yeah, she's there. They, they so I think she was closer to like might have been like fourteen dollars all in or something like that. But I thought the same thing. She's only won the two races, and one of them was a. Heavy track on debut, I'm pretty sure, or a second start. The other one was a thousand guineas on yes, a heavy yes, track, she, and she, she likes she's it. She's just a mutter. And when she ran third fresh, first up, it was behind Zoo Gotcha and Lady Laguna, who won three Group Ones between them. One of the only other bets that I've had on the program is in the Gold Rush. Mm-hmm. I'm on Noble Soldier. Okay, twenty six dollars. Interesting. He's is going. Run, he's going well. Robin Luke Price. Yeah. Yeah, I know the horse. Yeah, he's up to winning a race like that. Okay. And he's a, he, he's a weird horse because sometimes he really revish, relishes heavy tracks. Like some heavy tracks he really likes yep. and others he doesn't. Mm-hmm. So it could go one way or the other. There you go. One of those. Keep an eye out. Let's move on to the good, the bad, the ugly, Blake, presented by Ultimate Punters Challenge, the UPC showdown. If you don't know who they are, punters, go and check them out on social media. But basically it's one bet, 12 races, whether it's – Wednesday, Thursday this week, newbies or, or Saturday, but great way to play. It's You get points based off your top tote. It's, it's just fantastic. It is. It's, uh, I, would, I would describe it as like tournament-style yeah, betting. Like a tipping comp almost. $50 entry. Last week's winner of the Saturday showdown, 31355 They won. So, yep, Dollars. download the app. Get involved in the showdown. Check it out. Let us know if you like it or you don't like it, what they can do to improve. That's right. There's been lots of improvements throughout the... I think it's only been going for eight or nine weeks and, you know, we get a lot of feedback and we pass it on and, and they adjust and accordingly, it's all which happening. is, which it's, is a, great. It's, a, it's a very good app and it's very good, it's very good fun. It's good to have a ticket going on a Saturday afternoon and, 
and and cheer like if you if you're not having a bet in every race, it's a great later way in the day, bang, bang, you got a ticket in UPC showdown, you got a reason to watch the race, and you've got a reason to cheer one home at fifty to one. That's right. Well, the good this week is basically exactly what you just spoke about. The last leg last Saturday in the UPC showdown was the Group One Robert Sangster Stakes, and Lockie Nindorf, the local hoop on a thirty to one shot. Back to the inside, got the job done. So not only did the punters fill up if you had him in the showdown, but Lockie Nindorf, he's the good, is where I'm getting at, Blake. The emotion that he showed after winning his maiden group one win, I thought that's what you love to see. He just seemed like a champion young kid who's got plenty more group ones in store for him. Well, I hope so. Um, And it was outstanding to see the emotion. I, I know that I'd be bloody... A a sobbing mess if I won a Group 1, I reckon. Um, Yeah, so that was outstanding by Lockie on Climbing Star. Um, Bloody hell. I actually early crowed learning to fly in this race. So did I. I, It got to the outside and I was like, (laughs) it's over. Um, I don't know if she ever got to the front or what. No, I don't think she did. It was a bloody monster run. It's going to run in the Goodwood too, apparently. Yeah. I see my... Predictions at the start of the at the start of the autumn was Celestial Legend learning to fly and Young Werther. He's let us down, but good to see learning to fly sticking around trying to do her part in my little predictions and get a Group One. She come yeah, I don't. I know. thought she had it shot to bits. She did. She did. I was thinking that I had a bet in that race, but I didn't have a bet. But I I do remember at the furlong going, oh, geez, learning to fly over the, the top. Way she's let down because I I was pretend like I had my eye on her in Sydney, like. And I let her go, and, and then she loomed, and I was like, oh, <laughs> bloody hell. Bloody hell. Well, I was sort of thinking, I can't let this horse go around without my hard-earned on here. So She was well in, too, 18 into 10 on the day. Mm. Off the map. Um, the bad, Blake, and the bad and the ugly are going to basically merge into one here because it's we're with respect to the bull... How bloody bad is the bull? How bloody bad is the bull? The track. Let's start with the. Let's start with the bad. And it was the day two track. Now I don't care what people say about. Oh, it's a three day carnival. They can't get it right all three days. Well, yeah, but surely you can dish up something better than what they did on Wednesday. You don't want to. <coughs> you don't want an inside highway. It's the worst possible outcome for any track. Mm. It's just. Yeah. Not good punting. Dean Watling made a great point on Twitter. He said, anyone can get off the fence, not everyone can get on it. That's right. Which is great. If if the fence is cactus, then jockeys can make moves and get to the outside fence or, or fan. But if the fence is hot, what are they going to... What do they, what do they want to do? Run in single file? Well, like, you see, like, like Rose Hill on Saturday, they were, we were expecting that to sort of be inside biased. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it wasn't. No. It was sort of middle of the track. And then a horse like um, I Know a Star. I Am a Star, what's I it called? I Know a Star. I Know a Star. Yep. I Know a Star. I know he got beat, but he had his opportunity because he, he led at a fast enough tempo and yep. and made his way to the best part of the track. I only got overrun late. But um, if, if the fence is – you want it to be even across the board, but you'd prefer a, a track that um, – is favourable to horses coming down the middle than right on the fence. Yeah, correct. Definitely. And then the ugly was, we're we're not fully across this just yet because it only happened an hour or two ago this morning, but I think it was race two at Warrnambool on Thursday, which it looked like it was a jumps race. And obviously, I think at the Bull, they've got, I think it's called Steeple Lane. So there's like, there's a few tracks and they... They go clockwise, and then when they come around, they go anti-clockwise. So, obviously, a horse has thrown the jockey at one of the jumps and fallen. The horse has got back up on its feet. All good. But as they've as the race is still on, and they've come into the home straight, this horse has sort of got onto the track as well. But the clerk of the course has come up and sort of tried to keep this horse from going out into the middle of the track and interfering with the race. But I've never seen it before where a clerk of the course is chasing after another horse mid-race and sort of in the mix with, with horses in the final 400 metres. Like, safety was probably, you know, the clerk of the course's number one motive. But I think it's an ugly look. 
I obviously he had good interests. Yes. Like he had yeah. he had good intent. Yeah, yeah. Going and to, like okay, the for horse. the horse and the riders around the yeah. horse, but. Like picking that horse up in the run where there's other horses under the whip and, and they're trying to fight out a finish. Yeah. Like he just put another body amongst mm. those horses. Yeah. Like, and I think it's a bad look, especially if another horse gets interfered with by the clerk of the course. That's right. Would have been, I don't know if it's a no race well, or I what. It, it I, don't should, I think it should have been even still. Even. <clears throat> like, potentially. Yeah. I, I don't know. No, if there, if there was no if there was no, no interference, yeah, mate, I, then I, I, yeah, okay, play on, yeah. But if there was interference, you, there could be potential for um, it being called a no race, and then having another horse amongst horses mm. at their full gallop just creates greater potential for harm, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so, so. I think he should have just stayed out. Often you see horses that are riderless. Don't make any impact on the the race. Just, mm. just be wary. Yep, and then pick it up after the post. Yep, I agree because it could have it could have got ugly, but it didn't. Thankfully, yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, um, that's about it from us this week, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it's a short podcast this week. Um, next week we're going to be back, Full hitting swing. strong. Yeah, what do we got on in Queensland next week? Much? Hollandale. Oh. Holland. I wish it was on the Gold Coast. Mm. It's not. It's not. Sunshine Coast. Sunshine Coast, yeah. Jeez, they get it all up there. They do get it all up there. i tell you what else they might be getting up there very soon is Pungo. Yes. So we've got a race marked down for him on the calendar. Mm-hmm. May 19th, punters. Yep. Sunshine Coast on a Sunday. The team, the leg up team, mm-hmm. will be going there. Yep. Watching him go around. Watching him win. He'll win. He will win. He'll win. Um, I've had lots of luck at the Sunshine Coast as an owner. We'll be having, we'll be having a couple of uh, skewies. Yep. We'll be having a lot of fun. Great. It's, it's, one, it's one of the best tracks in the country for, for spectating, I think. Well, I've never been there, so oh. I'm excited. Hopefully it's great weather. Hopefully we can – we'll get a table. Um, yeah. If you guys are interested, anybody that's interested in coming along for the ride, let us know. We'll, uh, we'll sort the table out. We'll, we'll have a few beers and, and we'll have a cracking day out. Um, that race is on the cards only if Gold Coast doesn't race on the Friday, the following yeah. Friday night, which is unlikely to race there because there's another race there for him. Yes. So we'll either be going the Sunday the 19th or the Friday the 24th. Yeah. I like that. I think it's a good idea. Good and then those of you that are interested in racing a horse with us, Pungo, don't worry about him, he's all sold. But we do still have a few shares left in Genetic Freak. I know we've sold... Plenty of them in the last week. So he's almost sold. Um, he's in work with Campo as well on the Gold Coast. And, and all reports, Campo's really happy with him. And he'll be going the trial soon enough. Can't wait. Yeah, me too. We'll have two good horses in work mm. at the races. Winning. Winning. Wow. Big races. Bring it on. Group ones. Yeah. See you, punters. Have a great weekend. Thanks.